Hi, this is David Doss for Mo2. Digital Performer 8 has a brand new video engine with numerous enhancements for composers who scored a picture in DP. In this video, I'm going to show you some of these features and how you can work with movies. Here's a DP project of a film score I recently worked on. The director sent me a QuickTime movie of the picture locked version, which has all the dialogue in the audio track. To open the movie in my DP project, I go to the project menu and I choose movie, or I can hit shift V. A dialog box appears, asking me which movie to load, so let me select that. This movie has an audio track, which is the dialog and the sound effects, but no music. If I right click on the movie, I get a menu of options. In previous versions of DP, I might have used the import movie audio command to copy the movie's audio into my sequence, and I can still do that if I need to. But now, in Digital Performer 8, I can automatically route the movie's audio track directly to any output or bus. From there, I can split dialogue and Foley tracks to separate faders, or otherwise mix and process the movie's audio using DP's extensive mixing environment. DP's new video engine ensures that the movie's audio remains synced, sample accurately, with picture and my DP project timeline. Now one thing you'll need to make sure of right from the start is making sure that the frame rate is set correctly. My director helpfully delivered this movie with timecode burned in, so I can verify it easily. One way you can check the frame rate is by opening the movie in QuickTime Player and choosing Window Show Movie Inspector, which will show you the frame rate. In this case, QuickTime says it's 23.98, which is a rounded value of the very common frame rate 23.976. So back in DP, I'm going to set my frame rate to 23.976 and make sure that in the counter area, I'm viewing frames. Now, as I select random points in my movie, I can see that the on-screen timecode always matches DP's location. This is very important to get right. If there's a mismatch, you'll find that the music won't sync up properly with the video once the editor puts it all together. There's a lot of different places you can put the movie to integrate with your workflow. In its current state, the movie is just another window in DP that can be moved and overlapped. If you'd like it to always be in the foreground, simply right click on the movie and choose Movie Floats on Top. If you're a fan of the consolidated window, you can easily pop the movie into the consolidated window just by double clicking it. Then double click it again if you want to pop it back out. If you do a lot of work in the Sequence Editor, which I'll call up by hitting Shift-S, you can see the movie here too, by enabling the Track Selector, then clicking on the Movie Track. As you can see, the Sequence Editor will draw thumbnails of stills from the movie. It'll even update them according to your zoom level. Here, I'm using Command Left Arrow and Command Right Arrow to increase and decrease the horizontal zoom. Many composers utilize DP's unique Chunks feature, which allows you to have many individual sequences within one master file, which is particularly useful when scoring the picture because normally a movie or TV show will require many individual cues. If the director or editor delivers one long video of the entire project, then it's best to use Use Same Movie for All Sequences, which automatically assigns this movie to every sequence in the file. If you go this route, then each cue needs to be assigned a specific start time in the movie. This is done in the Chunks window by clicking on a specific sequence, then using the mini menu's Set Chunk Start Time. That way, you can compose specific pieces of music or sequences for specific moments in the movie and know that everything is perfectly locked to picture. Sometimes you might receive multiple movies, or in the case of this movie, the director did send me one master movie, but later made a small edit to a scene in the middle of the movie and sent it to me as a separate file. If you use the same movie for all sequences is disabled, you'll be able to open different movies for each sequence in the DP file. If you have multiple monitors, like I have here, you might want to utilize one monitor to view the movie full screen. That's easily done by dragging the movie to the desired monitor, then clicking the full screen button. That way, you can view the movie on one monitor and work at composing the score on the other. If you're working on just one monitor, you can go full screen temporarily while previewing your work or showing it to clients. 
If you have a video interface, such as Motu's HD Express or its big brother, the HDX SDI, you can also easily output the video to an external monitor or TV, which is the most impressive way of scoring the picture. DP can also output via FireWire to a camcorder or other video converter. If you like working with visual cues as you score a picture, DP can superimpose streamers, punchers, and flutters over the source movie. There's two ways to do this. The easiest way is to use marker streamers. You may already be used to using markers in DP to denote specific sections of a sequence, and if you're scoring the picture, perhaps you've already placed markers on specific visual hit points, like this one. Let's go to the markers window. In the mini menu, I'll choose show streamers. Now, if I go to my marker at measure 57, I can click in the streamer column and add any type of streamer I like. When I play back the movie, a streamer is automatically superimposed. If you don't want to tie markers to streamers, you can use the other kind of streamer, called a standalone streamer, which is the same thing except it's inserted in the conductor track. If I want to do that, I go into my conductor track by clicking in it and bringing up the event list, which is Shift E. And then I can use the pull down menu to add a streamer, punch, or flutter, and place it at a specific time. If you'd like more advanced control over a streamer, choose Set Streamer Options in the Markers window, which takes you to a preference pane where you can customize its behavior. If you're at the beginning of scoring a new picture, I suggest you go to Preferences, to the Play and Record section, and click on Film Scoring Events. Here, you can enable New Markers Have a Streamer, so that each of your markers get streamers automatically. If for any reason you need to turn them off globally, that can be done here too. Once you've finished working on a queue, you might want to export a QuickTime movie of your work to send to the director. DP's Bounce to Disk includes an option for that. First, select the area and the tracks that you want to include, and then go to the File menu and choose Bounce to Disk, or hit Command-J. In the Bounce to Disk window, click on the File Format Choices, and you'll see QuickTime Export Movie. Give the movie a name and hit OK. Another dialog box will come up with the option to include film scoring events. And once you click OK, DP will make you a QuickTime movie featuring your audio alongside the original video, ideal for sending to the director. Sometimes directors or editors might deliver a movie file that has a stereo audio track with the dialog on the left side and the Foley and sound effects on the right. Here's a great way to handle that. Right click on the movie and send its output to a new stereo bus pair. In this file, all my buses up to 7 and 8 have been used, so I'll choose 9 and 10. Then, go to the Project menu and choose Add Track, Aux Track. You'll want to do this twice. Then go to the Input column and choose Bus 9 for one and Bus 10 for the other. Then, option click their names and label them as Dialog and Sound Effects. I also like to color code those tracks different than anything else in the sequence, so I'll select both those tracks, hold down the T key, and choose a new color. The T key colors all the selected tracks at once. And now you have quick and easy control over the dialogue and sound effects independently. <laughs>